Today, we are working on the Orion Power Up mod. So, I know some of you out there have an Orion, and if it's not performing quite the way you want it to, we're gonna show you how to beef this up in just a few simple steps. One of the first things I have to say about this is it does void your warranty. So if you're not comfortable with voiding your warranty and potentially causing damage, then maybe this isn't for you. For those of you in the Dynaverse that are more adventurous and really want to see the maximum you can get out of your Orion, then stay tuned because we're about to go crazy and break this thing open. Well, open this thing up and do some modifications. So just a quick recap of what we're gonna do today to break it down for you so you can even see if this is something that interests you. We're gonna take the bottom layer case off of the Orion and inside below the coil here in the center is a rubber, rubber gasket in there. And there's nothing underneath that rubber gasket. Uh, so big shout outs to some of the members on the Dynaverse, like Grover, who really pioneered this and went to town and just ripped their uh, gasket out, which you can do. And then one of the users, Next Vision, took his apart and really did it the right way, which is what we're gonna do here. So once we get in there and we get that rubber, we're gonna cut it in half. Uh, and so what that does is it drops the device further down into the Orion. And what that does is if you've watched my torch heating video, you've seen the difference between where you point the torch on the cap. This is essentially doing the same thing. The induction field has a center. And currently the center to the Orion is somewhere up in this range here. And what that does is it causes the click to come very quickly. So sometimes you're not getting really the performance you want out of this. By cutting the rubber and dropping it down, you're gonna end up with the center of the induction field somewhere around there, making it slower to click. Now, this is where it gets tricky because if you cut too much off of the rubber, the click will be too slow and you'll reach the Orion's timeout. So once we get in there, we're gonna go slow, we're gonna take it easy, we're gonna cut a little bit of rubber off at a time and maybe do some testing in between to make sure that we're not hitting that timeout. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just show you uh, what a normal click does. For today's example, we're gonna use a tip that the Orion um, struggles a little bit with just because it's more dense. Same thing with the newer 21 Omni tips. Uh, it's not that it can't do it, it's just it has to work really hard to get those tips hot. And then this cap that I'm using is a Rosium non-captive cap. I'm using this one because I'm very familiar with using this one in induction heaters. This is uh, just gets me the temperature I want when I'm using induction. I tend to pair caps with heat styles and, and stems with what kind of mood I'm in, but that's a whole nother thing. All right, so... Here we go, we're gonna show you what the first heat up on the Orion looks like and how fast it gets to click. So you can see it clicked. Very early, which is okay. That was a nice wispy hit. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't wanna tear apart your Orion to help this situation is you can drop it in let it go a few blinks, pull it out, drop it in, let it go a few blinks, pull it out, and then just do that until you get to the click. And what that does is it lets the heat soak to the center because when you pull it out, you stop the heating and the heat travels towards the center and it makes the click come slower but does a more thorough heating. Uh, so that's just an easy little tip if you don't want to go any further past this because this is the point where the vo warranty gets voided 
Unfortunately, my magnet already kind of came off, so we're just gonna set that to the side so it doesn't get in the way. You can use a, a flathead screwdriver, you know, if you don't have any tools around the house. You do run a risk of cracking this. It is easy to crack if you use a flathead screwdriver. That's why I suggest using like uh, phone repair tools, like some of the spudgers you see here to just kind of separate out this uh, this little piece of plastic here. You just kind of want to push it in. Let's see which one works best. Again, you just want to go slow. So we're going to see which one which one works best. Uh, you know, out of these spudgers, we're going to see which one. Let's see if we can get this one to work. And we're just going to kind of work our way in and around. Again, this is one of the parts you want to take a good amount of time on um, because this is where you can crack the case. So just go slow. Once we get this case open, it's actually a fairly easy process to do the rest. So take your time on this part. We don't want to crack the plastic. If you know, if we can avoid cracking the plastic, that's always a good thing. Yeah, and you just kind of keep sliding this around and working it to the point where you can kind of just pop the housing, pop the housing off. And once you get it all loose and kind of, I, I, you know, want to do a couple runs to just make sure I get the whole, the whole body loose and then we'll pop it off. See, so I ran it around a couple times just to get everywhere loose. You don't want to just go in and start prying. You kind of want to edge everything down and then once you get that done you can start really doing some work to just kind of try and pry this away from itself again slow slowly so you don't mess up the plastic and this is also why if you can use a plastic spudger tool like one of these it's kind of better because it'll it won't damage the plastic as much one is being a little more difficult than some of the previous ones I've done. But again, the way that they're glued or how old they are, how they've been used can really change uh, how easy they come off. Also, if yours already has any cracks in it or anything, you wanna be really careful.
There it goes. So, you just work it down, pulled off the top, and then you have the little power button which just uh, sits in there, so don't forget that when you reassemble it. And as you can see, it has six clips around the side that you kind of need to work up and with some glue. Which again is why I'm saying you got to go slow and kind of pry up around as you go to break that glue. And again, that's why some are more difficult to take apart than others depending on the, you know, as you can see, some of these have more glue than the others. So depending on if any of that has kind of come off or not. Okay, so now we're here. It's kind of intimidating, but don't worry. Um, you know, try not to touch any of this stuff with metal in the center, any of the circuit boards or cross any of this. It can get uh, pretty dicey just putting your device at risk. Uh, let's get this stuff out of the way since we won't need those. Then the next mission is one, two, three, four screws. We're just going to take those off. I have this nifty little magnetic mat. It's a phone repair kit that I picked up. Super useful. So another thing uh, that I like to use to keep my screws in is my Vatman case. It's easy to just put the screws in there and then close it up so you don't lose them. And if you knock, knock it off your desk or something. Okay, now that you have the four screws out, you're gonna gently lift the board out of the bottom here. And just be careful, again, go really slow because your batteries are uh, glued and taped down underneath. So there's just a little bit of glue right there on that. So just go slow and the whole thing lifts out. And that's what your induction module looks like, batteries and all. I mean, this is also good. You can see if your batteries are bloated or anything. You have this glass cup in there. Ooh, we can even give this a clean while we have this open. Sometimes you don't realize how dirty uh, that piece gets. So this is this is where we wanted to get the whole time. This has been our, our goal here. So now that you have it down to here, you're gonna take these two screws out and set those to the side take them out of there and this is what you uh, want to cut so essentially the goal is to cut this in half as evenly as possible so when I say in half, I mean this foot should be half the size. So you're going to cut about that much off right there. And again, this is where, uh, this is where you might want to just go a little slow 
take a little bit off at a time and test it by just setting it here, setting this down on here, setting the cup in. And now remember, be very careful because this, this if you test it, because this stuff isn't put back together all the way, you can kind of just um, gently fit everything back together, you know, if, if you want to go that much and test it, do a little bit and test it. I can tell you now, though, that most people end up cutting about half off. So just look at the size of the feet and cut that in half. Um, I mean, you can use any sort of little knife or anything to just... Uh, There we go. I mean, not the greatest job, but it'll get it done. So that's what we took off. I kind of messed up this foot to be honest, but not the end of the world. As long as you can kind of get it to sit in there uh, and use the screws. Clean that glass, put these screws back in. Maybe let's try putting them in here first. That might be easier. Now the other thing with these screws is you might have to uh, kind of tighten them down past where they want to go. And it's plastic, so it should be okay. Just don't go too crazy. You know, nice and snug to get that to really drop down. And then take your induction module, get it all lined up, put it back, get the screws out for the top. Now don't don't throw away this this silicone because um, if you happen to have cut it too much and now the Orion is timing out, uh, you can always try and recoup some of that 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 rubber to uh, put back underneath. You know if you cut it down again, uh, it's easy with an exacto knife, but I kind of just wanted to show you. You can grab any old whatever knife and uh, do it at home with just the stuff you have around the house. You know, a flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver that's small, eyeglasses repair kit, stuff a lot of us have. All right, as I said, I'm gonna wash this little cup real quick. I wasn't really expecting that to be so dirty. All right, nice and clean. We're just gonna drop that back in. Take the power button, 
make sure the power button goes back in the right slot and preferably the right direction orientation. So, and this is kind of the, the tricky part. You gotta kind of hold that thing as you kind of fit it all, fit it all together. So I like to do it like this and just kind of clamshell it. And there it is, put my magnet back. And then one, two, three. Oh, and it turns on, there it is. Now for the moment of truth. I'm gonna switch to a fresh, uh, fresh device because that one was just a little halfway through. Same tip though. So variables aren't really changing because same tip, same cap. And let's see the difference in heat up time. So as you can see, <coughs> huge difference in heat up time. <coughs> <coughs> so as you can see, huge difference in heat up time, huge difference in performance, putting the Orion really where it wants to be and making it awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay lifted, be safe, and have fun. Uh -huh.